last night, me and the wife sat down for dinner, and we started a discussion. We decided we were going to get solar power for the house. It's not a huge system. We're going to do five kilowatts, no battery backup. It's going to be an on-grid system, which means we're also going to use the electric meter and the solar panels. We talked about it during the house build. And for those of you who watched our videos, while we were building the house, we did do some additions like the overhang and we added a shed and the position of the house and certain options that we wanted. We did talk about solar, but with solar, it is quite an investment. We knew our budget for the house. That was pretty easy to do. What we didn't know how much it was going to cost to furnish everything and buy everything we need in this house in Thailand. When we moved here, we came here with about 15 bins of basically just personal items and a few odds and ends. So to buy a bed and the closets and a desk and, you know, TVs and things like that, we weren't really sure how much of our budget we were going to burn up. Well, now that things have settled down and we've been living here for over six months, we found out we're pretty much settled in. And the reason we know this is because we're not going to Index Living Mall anymore. We're not going to a lot of stores while we were building the house to furnish it and things like that. When we go to Home Pro, we're only spending, you know, five to a thousand to three thousand baht, not ten thousand baht. So we're settled in. And we looked at our budget for what we had for the house, and there's money left over, believe it or not. So we've been t talking about solar on and off for a couple weeks, and now we've decided to go with it. Well, this is how the conversation started. I was thinking, okay, great. I'll shoot a video of the installation of the solar, and then I'll get all sorts of comments on how it's not worth it, you know, your return on investment's going to take forever. Well, to set things straight, we're looking to go to solar for a few reasons. Number one, it's Thailand. Okay, right now it's rainy season and it is cloudy out. But most of the time, it is sunny for 12 hours out of the day. Being close to the, closer to the equator than we are in America, we have a good, solid, sunny 12 hours. And the way our house faces, one side is always facing the sun on the west side. So it's suitable. And like I said, we're not looking to just go completely off grid. We're always going to be using the electricity from the meter, but the solar panels are going to help us. Now, that being said, the reason we're doing it is because both of us feel that this is our forever home. Things can change, time goes by. But the one thing I like about here is we're settled into pretty much a Thai community. We're not in a village, you know, we're not way out in the countryside, but we're not in a major city. So if things do change, it's gonna be rather slow. But we see ourselves living here for the rest of our lives. Neither one of us wanna move again. We did a lot of moving since we started. So that being said, the savings that we get on the electric bill will eventually add up. Okay, I'm 60 years old. Let's just pick a number, let's say 80. That's 20 years. Lot is 16 years younger than me. She's gonna be around a lot longer than 20 more years. So it will pay for itself. This is what got us started on the conversation that went on for about two hours and this is what I wanna share with you. Just before we started thinking about retiring and moving back to Thailand, um, started watching some YouTube videos on visas and entry to Thailand and things like that. Previously, I did live here for four years, back in 2010 till 2015. So I had a good idea, but I started just seeing if there were any updates or anything like that. So there was a lot of good information on YouTube and that's where we came up with the idea of documenting 
our move to Thailand. Not so much to be a YouTube influencer or anything like that. There is no way. I am the last person you would ever want to take advice from. Um, and YouTube loves to give it. And the comments love to give it. But we basically started our YouTube channel, like I said before, for friends and families, members to see what we're doing now that we're retired in Thailand. And the one thing we really do like about YouTube with the, with the videos that we have made, some nights we like, it's like a movie night and we go back and watch our journey here to Thailand and what we did when we first got here. It's kind of like when I was a kid and my dad would break out the Super 8 movie projector and we'd see Christmases from, you know, 1967 or something like that. So I do enjoy the documentation of that. And since moving here to Thailand, I do watch a lot more YouTube. When we were building the house, I was watching other guys build houses and stuff like that. Well, the algorithm picks up on what you're looking at and starts suggesting other things. And this is where the conversation turned last night after mentioning, okay, we'll get the comments about this and the comments about that. When we did our house building series, there were a few, 99% of the comments were positive. But there were a few comments of, you're an idiot, your wife is going to move their family into the house, and eventually you're going to get kicked out because you can't own anything in Thailand. Okay, that might be true and it does happen. And then actually, YouTube has suggested a few of these vloggers that, uh, how can I say, they tell other people's stories about their nightmares here in Thailand with Thai women. And they're all negative because, let's face it, you don't want to see a car just driving down the road. You want to see that car wrecked. So these guys concentrate on stories of where they've come over to Thailand and a Thai woman has taken everything from them and left them broke back in their home country again. And that I understand, it does happen. But a lot of these vloggers blame the woman. And I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute, if this is the woman's plan and she wants to carry this out on some unexpecting foreigner, it's not her fault. Stupid. Okay, so about the comment of she's gonna move her entire family in and kick me out, this is coming from somebody who has no idea what our circumstances even are. Like, does he even know that, yes, my wife really has no contact with her family? They're not gonna move in? And second of all, I was married when I was in the US. I was married for 21 years. And guess what? You know, we grew apart, we separated, and we ended up getting divorced. She got the house. So it's not something that just happens here in Thailand to everybody who comes here. And this is what these vloggers do. They make it sound like it's the woman's fault. And this is why I'm, 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 like, I'm thinking last night, I'm like, well, okay, you hook up with, you walk into a bar in Thailand where there's many beautiful girls one finds you attractive, and you start dating them. Same thing in America. When I was young, I would go to a bar, meet a girl, start dating them. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it didn't. And not once while I was dating a girl in America, after a couple weeks, she would say, I love you so much, I want to spend the rest of your life with you but I need a salary of 30,000 baht a month. Can you help me out? Or I'd say $1,000 a month. Uh, that would be a tale to head for the hills and it's just something that doesn't happen. So why would a guy come over here and think it's okay? So it's his own fault. And the next point is as I got older, I had a job where um, I traveled all over the world. And that's one of the reasons I ended up in Thailand. 
Uh, in America, we have strip joints. Uh, Canada has strip joints. Canada, you have the best strip joints. But anyways, when there'd be a crew of us, crew of us out and we finish up a job, we usually ended up at one of these strip joints. And basically, it's a bunch of girls dancing around poles, and you go and buy them drinks, and you pay them for lap dances, and they'll sit with you, and they'll pretend they're your girlfriend. But that's what they're doing. They're pretending. There's no difference from what happens there than what happens here. So why these guys think, oh, this girl really likes me? They're there. It's a business. So you can't blame the girl. Uh, the first time I came to Thailand was in the early 90s. This is before the internet really took off. I had no idea where even Thailand was. Uh, in school, nothing really ever happened here that was in the history books. So it, I knew it was in Asia, but that was about it. Uh, upon arriving, I didn't know. Is it safe? You know, can I walk around? And I basically, for the first couple few days, just had a car take me to work, drop me off at the hotel, and I spent the nights there. Uh, one day, I wandered out, and I went to a shopping mall. And inside that shopping mall was a grocery store. Whenever I went to a foreign country, I'd always go to a grocery store for some reason, just to see the different foods and stuff like that. I find it interesting. And the fruit really grabbed my eye because I seen fruit here at this grocery store that I've never seen before in my life. And somebody came up and asked me if I needed any help or what I was looking for. And that happened to be Lot. She worked at a grocery store in the Mall of Banga B for about 10 years. And we had a little small talk and that was about it and I left. Well. As time went by on this trip, I hooked up with some other contractors on the job and they introduced me to Nana Plaza. I was pleasantly surprised, not to say the least. But when I walked in there, I knew exactly what I was walking into. And then once again, you hear these vloggers talk about how these Thai girls take advantage of these guys. That's their job. That's how they earn a living. And why so many people are so naive, I don't, I don't claim at all to be the smartest guy in the world, but I could figure that out. And that's what makes me mad about these vloggers. They're saying that all Thai women are the same. Well, I went home, loved Thailand, volunteered whenever there was another job here. And a few, few years later, you know, my wish came true and I got sent back to Thailand. And while I was here, I was a lot more savvy. The internet was out, I could look things up, I knew it was safe, and I was familiar with it a little bit. And that's another thing, not to get off subject. These vloggers who have lived here one, two, three, six years, and they say they know Thailand, they're full of shit. You can live here your whole life and you're never gonna understand Thailand 100%. I've talked to guys that have lived here for 25 years and agree with me. They're still learning. So anyways, not to get off subject. Um, I was like, I wonder if Lot's still at the Mall of Banga B. So I went to the, back to the grocery store and sure, sure enough, she's still working there. So we did some more small talking and uh, we went out to dinner. Nothing ever happened. I never made any advances because I knew I wasn't living in Thailand and it could be years since we were, since till I'll be back. And she never made any moves on me either. And at this point, email was out. So we did exchange emails. And it was funny because this is back in the day where, t you know, Thai people didn't have tablets and desktops and things like that. They'd go to these internet cafes. But we'd keep in touch and maybe an email every four to six months just to say hi. Okay, so fast forward. Uh, 2009, my company decided to open up an office in Bangkok to expand our reach in Asia. And, of course, I jumped on the opportunity to sign on. Uh, luckily, I got the job. 
So when I moved to Bangkok, I gave shot a lot an email and said, hey, I'm here. I'm going to be here. I'm on a two year contract. Let's hook up. And we did. We started dating. Now, during this time, she never rolled over and said, I love you so much. I want to marry you. But I need 30,000 baht a month. There were no red flags. Not that I was even looking for them. We were having fun. And as time went by, uh, my two-year contract was up, but they extended it for another two years. So I had a deep feeling that it wasn't going to go much farther than that, so I did. I asked her. I wanted to spend the rest of my life with her at the time, and I asked her to marry me. And she said yes. And now, in typical Thai fashion, she took control of that, which I'm very happy with because I don't want to deal with all that crap anyways. And she did a great job. Her friends helped. It was, it was fun. So in 2013, we got married. Now at this point, still, still she didn't ask for a salary. Yes, we had a joint savings account, put money in, but every time she was going to spend money on something, she would let me know. And I'd be like, babe, you don't have to tell me this. Just do it. If we need it, buy it. She's always like, okay, but I'm just checking with you. So to say all Thai women are the same that some of these vloggers are doing is absolutely not true. And this was our big conversation last night during dinner. And then this morning I was even thinking about it deeper. Like when my contract was up, uh, we already started the application for the green card. Everything went well. We got the green card. We moved back to America. In that time, we found a house within a month. We were moved in. Uh, our stuff arrived back from Thailand that we had. So really, we didn't have to buy that much because we basically refurnished the condo. In uh, We were living in Bangkok with our own stuff because it was a little dated. Okay, getting a little off track. Other vloggers, they say, never buy a house, rent. And I watched one vlogger and he says, I rent a condo and I will live here for about 10 years because after about 10 years, the condo is going to get run down and outdated. I lived in a condo that was probably 20 years old and it was in pristine shape. It's just we wanted to refurnish it with our own stuff. The building itself did not seem run down. So to say a condo is going to run down in 10 years and he basically said the same thing about a house and I'm like the houses in Thailand they're built out to cement they're good structures I'm the house next door has to be 40 to 50 years old how to say a house is going to fall apart in 10 years I don't understand where this vlogger is coming from so in our situation if I was to pay 30,000 baht a month on rent Within eight years, it would have paid for a house. So to say a house is not a good investment, even though it's not in my name, it's in Lot's name, I am in the blue book. And I do have a yellow book. So I am tied to the house, but no, I can never own it. Okay, back on subject. So when we went back to America, Lot just didn't want to lay around the house eating chocolates. She said she wanted to work. And we worked on that, but then realized it's not really going to happen because she doesn't have a driver's license. So we bought a car. She got her learner's permit. She practiced for six months, did all the driving time she had to do, and went for the driving test and passed. So now she knew how to drive and get around America. In America, we, don't live, we didn't live in a big city. We lived in the suburbs, so you really can't walk anywhere. You have to drive. So this was a perfect opportunity, and she got a job at Amazon and the fulfillment center, not too far from the house. And I know people say bad things about Amazon, but it was a really good paying job for her. And I opened up, we had a joint 
checking account. We had a joint savings account. And then I said, open up a savings account in your name and put your check in there and you could buy whatever you want. And she did. And it worked out great because I was able to handle all the bills and the overhead of the house and things like that. Every once in a while she would help if, you know, I got a little behind or something like that, but not very often. And she was able to build up quite a decent nest egg because she wasn't very material. But I will have to say she did love the price of name brand tennis shoes in America because they didn't have the 300% markup like they do here in America. And she did build up quite a collection on that, all with her own money. And she also liked the purses. So she did get a lot of coach purses. And one time we went, she did buy one Louis Vuitton wallet, which was actually pretty cool to go to because they are so expensive. You get like a salesperson. It was almost like buying a car. They were like, well, what are you going to use this purse for? And it was just a very interesting uh, situation, I found. And on top of that, with her money in her bank account, basically always financed a vacation back to Thailand once a year. So to say they're all gold diggers and just want to take your money and your possessions is a lie. And that was our whole conversation last night. You know, so after seven years in America, and of course in 2020, we came back here. And it was funny because we always used to come back in March. That way, when we came back to the Chicago area, it would kind of start warming up a little bit. But we had a real hectic year. We decided, hey, let's just go in January. And we did. We came here in January, which we never do. And every time we've come back, because we've always talked about living here in Thailand when I retire, we'd go to different areas to see what we thought. And we came here in January. We stayed in Bang Sari. And we moved around this area a lot, and we really seemed to like it. And uh, luckily, I mean, it, the COVID thing was just starting when we were leaving. Actually, I talked to one friend when we were over here and he, he mentioned online, he was like, hey, how are you dealing with the, the whole Corona thing there? And I'm like, Corona? I'm not, I'm not drinking Corona. I'm, dr I'm drinking Singha, you know? I didn't even know about it. And as we were flying home, they were. They were just starting to set up the tables and at the airport for like screenings and things like that. And I guess here in Thailand, in March, they did lock down the country, which I was thinking to myself, what would we have done if we would have came here and it, we weren't able to leave for almost a year? I don't see how people can survive on that. But luckily, that didn't happen. So during COVID and in 2020, I finally took a promotion at work. It was a desk job. Getting older, my back, the travel thing is a young man's job. So I'm like, okay, I'll take this desk job for my retirement. I did plan on retiring at 62. A um, little backstory on the job is it was a great job. I loved my job, but it took up a big part of my life with the travel. And there was always, when you traveled and you went on the job, you worked until the job was done. So there were a lot of times, most years, anywhere between 1,600 and 2,000 hours of overtime a year. The great thing about my job is anything during the week over eight hours was time and a half, and the weekends were double time, and holidays were triple time. So, my 401k grew very quickly. And I did save from day one of being there about 15%. So, then the whole COVID thing happens and eventually we all get sent to work from home. And I hated that. Uh, two years at home working 
The only time we really went out was to the grocery store on Saturday and then back home. Everything was closed anyways. There was really nothing to do. And that's when we started talking about, you know, let's go talk to a financial advisor and see what they say. So we did, and he basically told us we can retire right now at 59. Uh, what? And I was like, okay, this guy's crazy. Uh, I'm going to go see another one. And fortunately, the other financial advisor told me the exact same thing the first one did. And he said, of course, if you were planning on like retiring to a condo on Michigan Avenue in Chicago, no. But you're moving to Thailand, 40% less, you know, cost of living, uh, medical expenses are much less, insurance is much less, you'll be fine. So at 59, we decided well, from, if we sell all the cars and the house and the equity we have in the house, we could probably live two or three years just on that. So we did it. At 59, uh, it was really close to my birthday, I, I quit work. And um, shortly after that, it was like six months, Lot quit her job. And at the time, Believe it or not, there was a chip shortage or something with automobiles. Car dealerships were like basically empty. Lot had a 2015 Mustang with like 55,000 miles on it. We got $3,000 less than what we paid for it seven years before that. And I was like, wow, that is a great deal. Uh, we sold the Jeep to a guy I knew, gave him a good deal on it, plus we made money. But the best part was is that my granddaughter was engaged to get married, and her, her and her fiancé were looking for a place to live. Now, we sold our house to them, lock, stock, and barrel, fully furnished. You know, we took the personal effects we wanted. So it was a win-win for them and for us. For the simple reason, most, most, most Americans want to buy a house that's empty. And that was like one of the things I was trying to figure out is, it, do I have an estate sale? What if everything doesn't sell? Do I just give it away? Do I throw it away? I, I, I would hate to have done that. But the timing was perfect. The interest rates were low, prices were up, and uh, it went seamless. It was, it, it was perfect. There were a few little bumps, but that was it. So, when we arrived here, we rented a house, started our YouTube channel, started dealing with some of the comments, which started that whole conversation last night at dinner. So, basically, at this point, we just celebrated our 10-year wedding anniversary. We've known each other for about 20. Um, she still hasn't moved her family in. She still hasn't emptied the bank account. Um, I have no idea, but there was no mysterious Thai husband that moved into the house and kicked me out yet. So to, to gather all the Thai women that these vloggers do and they say they're all the same is just, just wrong. You know, and that's the reason I'm, I'm making this vlog because it was a very interesting conversation last night. Actually, I wish I would have videoed it, but you know, it was off the cuff and we were just talking about it. So it was a great conversation and I hope it comes through here. And we bought this home with the, the proceeds from selling our house there and the equity we had and basically had money left over too. So it was a win-win situation for us and we're very happy. Uh, backtracking to when we lived in a condo, was it nice? Sure, but you know what? It was boring. I had, I had a balcony, go sit out on the balcony, but here, you know, we got the outside, I, you know, I clean the floors, I pick up the leaves, I water the plants, we do landscaping. There's always something to do, you know? So to say, rent for the rest of your life don't ever buy in Thailand uh, I, I, I don't get it 
it's kind of like a lot of these other vloggers, you know, the 10 things you need to bring to Thailand when you come to visit. You only got to bring one thing, money. Everything else is here. I mean, I really, I don't understand it. But anyways, that was my rant. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I kind of explained that no, not all Thai women are out for money or out to get all your personal effects then dump you. It's just not the way it is. Thank you.